Well, we turn now to Madrid, where NATO allies are holding one of the most important summits in the alliance's history. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is shaking European security, and leaders are mapping out a new NATO posture on the continent. We are ready to face the threats of Russian aggression because, quite frankly, there's no choice. It's been a, uh, the most significant abuse of power since World War II. Retired Lieutenant General Ben Hodges is the former commanding general of the U.S. Army Europe. He is in Frankfurt, Germany. General Hodges, we know that this expansion to, of the High Readiness Force to 300,000 troops uh, is certainly being heralded by NATO Secretary General as a big deal. Just how significant do you view this as? Well, it, it's significant for three different reasons. Uh, number one, this would not be happening if you did not have all 30 nations of NATO agreeing that it was necessary. And all the work that's gone into achieving that level of uh, unity uh, demonstrates what, what makes the alliance so successful, despite all the challenges and, and problems and the warts. Uh, number two, it's important because it means now uh, we're not talking about 2%. We're talking about making sure that each nation delivers capable mm -hmm. women and men, properly trained and equipped, units, ships, aircraft that are ready to do their mission. And then, of course, number three, this is a, a, such an important part of deterrence, sending a clear message to the Kremlin that we, we could, in fact, crush them if they ever made the terrible mistake of attacking a NATO country. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Help people understand, I mean, what would your expectation be if Russia were to step over the line? What would we expect this rapid reaction force to do? Well, um, everybody from my president, uh, your prime minister, uh, every commander at every level constantly talks about we will defend every square inch of NATO. And in fact, even today, I was at the change of command ceremony for U.S. Army Europe, and the presiding officer was General Walters, who is SAC, Supreme Allied Commander, but also the commander of U.S. forces in Europe. And he said, we will defend every square inch mm -hmm. of Europe. So, I mean, it could not be more clear. And that means that if Russia ever made that terrible miscalculation, you know, they, they literally would, would be crushed because of the massive advantage and the level of readiness. It would still be ugly, but the outcome would be um, no question. Well, we know the troops would remain stationed in their home country. Do you have enough information yet to say how quickly you would expect uh, allies to get those forces ready, how quickly they could be in theater? Yeah. This is a really good question because we're talking about increasing the number of troops that are on a higher level of readiness, mm -hmm. but that will include troops from the U.S. and Canada, for example, that still would have to get to uh, into the European theater. So uh, in addition to actually designating a larger group of a larger set of capabilities at a higher level of readiness, um, we have to do what's called enablement of the SACUR's area of responsibility. That means improving uh, mobility, improving infrastructure, improving ammunition and fuel uh, availability in place, um, as well as increasing the numbers of troops that actually, for example, with the Canadian battle group that's in Latvia, I imagine we'll see more troops in, on top of that that are in Latvia on a full-time basis. Uh, I do want to talk about the Baltic situation in a moment, but I just want to stay with the question that we're asking there. Do you expect that we would be talking about, um, you know, having troops, like rapid response means what? 48 hours, two weeks. What What is rapid? Okay, so it, it's tiered. Mm -hmm. um, so inside that 300,000, you're talking about um, almost all of them being able to arrive inside 30 days. Okay. So think of, I mean, that, that will be quite a feat um, when you talk about all the equipment, the ammunition, moving by rail, uh, stand fast, those who would have to come from Canada or from the United States to get into Europe. Um, so I think there will, there will be uh, higher requirements for European countries to do more. Uh, already the United States has grown from about 60,000 to over 100,000 troops that are here, including rotational forces. So I think we'll see a, a variety of things. But inside that 300,000, you've got, you know, inside seven days, inside two weeks, inside 30 days uh, ready to, to move. 
vis-a-vis -vis the commitment from Canada, we know Secretary General Stoltenberg, we spoke to him yesterday on this program, said, you know, there's going to be a role for Canada. Canada's Prime Minister um, has suggested, yes, we are certainly part of these conversations, but we don't have any specifics yet. At the same time, we know the Canadian forces are struggling with recruitment. Uh, I, I know you are not inside those conversations in, in NATO, but what would you say to Canadians about how significant the contribution to this might be at a time where, where readiness is a concern for the Canadian forces? Well, um, you know, the Canadian forces are having the same challenge that American forces are. Uh, when the uh, economy is good or there's lots, you've got lots of job opportunities, the military always has a challenge for recruiting. And certainly the United States Army uh, has that, as do most of the European militaries as well. I think, candidly, uh, this will be very attractive for soldiers or young women and men from North America to see that they're going to have the opportunity to go serve in Europe for six months, nine months, a year. Um, to to do something like that, I think this will actually help. Uh, plus, it's a, a sense of purpose. You know, you're doing something that has such a strategic importance. I think this will be very attractive. Canada has always, and I would I would say this to you if you were Italian or Portuguese, Canada has always provided exceptionally talented young women and men uh, I spent a year with them in Kandahar in Afghanistan. I've worked with them in the years since. So the quality of people that uh, Canada sends over and the quality of equipment is so good. That's why NATO is counting on Canada to uh, step up as well. I want to touch quickly on the situation with the Baltic states. They, of course, have Russia on their doorstep, and they have uh, insisted that what they need is actually more troops in the country. We know this is something that's going to be discussed at this Madrid summit. Do you expect NATO to follow through on what the Baltic states are, are asking for? I hope so. Um, I, I listened to the president of Estonia just a few weeks ago, who's such an impressive, impressive uh, person and, and leader. And she said, look, don't don't talk to us about uh, liberation campaign or uh, rapid response mm -hmm. or help restore our sovereignty. We see what happens when Russian troops uh, cross the border and they occupy villages and towns. We see from Bucha what happens. Mm -hmm. So so allies in the Baltic uh, region are not uh, too keen on the idea of trading space for time. They don't have much space to trade in hopes that we will all arrive and get there to push the Russians back out. So I think um, the experiences of what we observed in Ukraine are uh, causing our Baltic allies to understandably say, we need to be talking about more forward defense, mm. more air missile defense, because now we also have to worry about protecting civilians, not just airports and seaports. We only have a minute left, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Canada's defense spending. We heard Secretary General Stoltenberg talking about this 2% of GDP, saying increasingly it is a floor, not a ceiling. Um, Canada is planning to increase its defense spending, but they're still eyeing 1.5%. There's no real meaningful discussion about hitting 2% here in Canada. Do you think that that is uh, satisfactory amongst Canada's allies right now when we see so many other countries increasing their defense spending? No, it's, it's absolutely not satisfactory, and, it, and it's inexplicable. Um, I, I think that Canada has the, uh, the means to do this, um, and, and you risk becoming a second tier. Uh, if you will, you, lo you lose a voice. You lose influence inside the alliance uh, on policy decisions uh, beyond other than the fact that every nation can veto something. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Germany, even, <laughs> even Germany is going to go blow past uh, 2%. And, and I think, um, of course, Canada does things not just in a NATO context, but as our such an essential partner with NORAD. Uh, there's so many other ways that Canada contributes. Uh, you've got your Pacific uh, responsibilities as well as Atlantic responsibilities. There's a lot to do. I don't know how you do that without uh, investing more in defense. I mean, I think that's often the response uh, from Canadian officials as they point to, for instance, Canada's contribution in Latvia right now uh, as, as saying, you know, this can't be measured purely in numbers. But I hear you saying those numbers matter a lot, too. Yeah, well, you can't do all the stuff that's expected without investing in modernization, uh, the amount of money it costs to, to train. I mean, the reason half the reason the Russians are doing so poorly is because they're not trained. I mean, they have a lot of nice new kit, but they're not trained. They haven't spent the money 
to be able to employ uh, it, it correctly. Uh, the maintenance, the fuel, the ammunition, the troops out in the field doing all that. So uh, maintaining a level of readiness, the ability to do the job, is very expensive, and I don't I don't know how Canada can meet all its requirements and that level of readiness without um, investing that much. Okay, we're gonna have to leave the conversation there for today, but thank you so much for your insight, sir. Catherine, thank you for the privilege. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.